What's up guys? Welcome to Bucket Talk with Coach T. This is the second episode and today we are going to be talking about rec ball or little league compared to travel ball and whether to know if you're ready, if that's something you want to do, kind of some pros and cons. There's endless pros and cons that we can do, but I did write down three pros and cons of travel baseball. And I'm speaking to little league parents or rec ball parents. And what I'm trying to help you understand is, is what you're getting and what is also available. And then also what the kind of the downside to that. So uh, just a little bit more about my background with travel baseball. I've been involved in, in coaching travel baseball for almost 10 years now couple of different organizations. I've seen some good things. I've seen some things that I would change um, through playing other teams and talking to other coaches and seeing what programs are doing and, and all kinds of different stuff to put together this information that I'm going to bring you combined with my own opinion and what I've kind of seen on and off the field as well. So um, some pros of, of travel baseball, you're going to get more exposure to college coaches. You're going to get more exposure to, um, you know, Lots of different opportunities out there for you to maybe get to that next level uh, or play on better teams or you never know who's watching. And so when you go to travel uh, tournaments or showcases, which by the way, travel baseball and showcase baseball are two different things. We'll do a different episode, different talk for that. But the big thing is, is one of the bigger pros, you're going to get more exposure. There's more opportunity to be seen. There's more opportunities for scholarships because you've been, of you being seen. So pro number one is exposure, more exposure and better exposure to uh, different opportunities. Con number one is the cost of travel baseball is pretty high. Um, the cost of travel baseball can range anywhere from, you know, $100, $200 a month for the year or one payment of $1,500 or $25, maybe even $4,000 depending on what <coughs> excuse me what the organization offers that's the other thing as as parents you should be looking at not only the reputation of the organization the coaches the player development coordinator the owner whoever's running the program whoever's running the tryouts that should be something that you're looking at but you should also be looking at the facilities and what else they offer and who they know so uh, keep that in mind the another pro for Travel baseball is more game reps. So, you know, on the weekend, you may play three to five, maybe six or seven games in the three or four day weekend tournament or showcase uh, or five games, which is lots of times more games than you're going to be playing at your local rec league. Normally there you get two, maybe three games per week in. So certainly more baseball to be played in the travel realm uh, spring and in, in, or excuse me, summer and fall. Travel baseball provides more game opportunity. Con number two is less practice because you have more games. It's played, you know, and it's, you just don't have practice. Maybe you have kids that are spread out over the state, maybe even spread out over the country. Some of the travel and elite travel teams that play in our country right now are made up of 12 to 15 kids from 12 to 15 different areas. And they come together on the weekends play high level competitive baseball together and then go back home. And so it's, but it's less practice. Travel ball doesn't teach as much of the basics and the fundamentals. It's not necessarily for player development. Travel baseball is for that competitive baseball player that is a little bit better, a little bit more advanced than rec league uh, and wants to have better competition to get even better. But if your kid, if your child or player is, one, two, three years into playing baseball and they're not quite committed and they don't really practice on their own and they're not really that dedicated to it, travel baseball is probably going to be a waste of your money because they're not going to get a whole lot better because most of these you know, teams don't practice together and aren't able to have practices. Um, pro number three for travel baseball would be better competition, right? So you have better exposure, you have more game live reps, and you're playing against better competition, which makes you better, which is why you would want to make the jump to travel baseball um, instead of or in addition to playing rec, rec baseball. A pro number, or excuse me, con number three for travel baseball is less of a team environment and more I. 
because especially when you get in from travel baseball to showcase, showcase is just that. I'm here to showcase my talents not so much win the game because they don't, you know, sometimes the showcases don't even keep score. So uh, understand that that's part of, that's part of it is if you're looking for that camaraderie, if you're looking for a team, if you're looking to, to have your player be involved in team sports, to be able to learn the idea and the concepts of playing and operating within a team, which I think is crucial and helps you benefit later on in life. Um, if that's, all you're looking for out of travel baseball, probably not the best place to find it. So I said, that's just three. Again, we could go on for a lot longer and I may do another pro and con to rec ball or expand upon this episode. But for today's episode, just those three pros and those three cons for travel baseball. And, you know, it's, um, I've seen a lot of organizations with players that don't necessarily belong on that travel team, but they're there due to several different reasons. The one that I've seen the most is financial. You know, you have an organization of uh, owner or, or coordinator that's tasked to fill rosters and help that business make money. So that's what you've got to understand, first of all, is that travel baseball is, is a money maker. Somebody is making money and somebody's making lots of it. Now, some teams, some organizations, there's less profit and more, more resources for the players and different things like that. But understand the person or the people that started that team or started that organization, they have risk, they have overhead, they have bills that they need to pay. And so they are in that to make money. Uh, that hopefully isn't their primary focus, but that is in a focus that they have to keep at the forefront of their mind at least. If not, they won't even have the team or the program to provide your player the area to get better. So there is that give and take. But I see a lot of organizations taking players that they shouldn't otherwise take to fill a roster to count on that $1,500, $4,000, whatever it is, and just taking money. Uh, stacking teams and just taking money to fill out other teams just to say I have seven, seven you know, 13 U teams or seven 15 U teams, whatever the case may be. And so some travel in some organizations have gotten away from, you know, the core of what baseball really is and being a team sport and, you know, being available to most. And they're kind of the, the, the middle class is being squeezed out in baseball big time. It's becoming a big sport of the haves and the have nots. And, and quite frankly, uh, what I'm trying to do here at Condor Baseball is bridge that gap. Give, give the rec league players somewhere to play that's above rec league level, but not break mom and dad's bank and, and still get better, still have resources, still have facilities and things that we're offering our players. We're not just saying, hey, you know, put a, put a uniform on. No, we're giving you a training program. We're giving you access to camps and clinics. We're giving you access to one-on-one -on -one coaching. We are giving you access to those facilities to help you get better both in the off season and during season. So there's lots of different things that each organization can offer, but you always want to look at what the offer sheet is. Is it just a jersey and a hat? Is it just the name that they've built and the reputation that they've built? Whatever it is, but make sure that it fits your family and fits your budget and is comfortable. Um, and make sure that you're comfortable with the coaching staff or the organization itself to do your, so make sure you do your homework. It's like anything else. If you make an investment anywhere else in life, you know, hopefully you're doing your due diligence and, and, you know, getting an inspection on the house, checking the neighborhood, checking the comps, maybe doing your research on the car that you're going to buy or, you know, whatever it is, hopefully you're doing your due diligence and whatever it is that you're doing anyway, but definitely want to make sure that you do it in baseball because a lot of people over promise and under deliver in the baseball world. And the reason why they're able to do that is because the standard of like creating success, um, doesn't really doesn't really fall on the organization, right? They can always say, eh, even baseball's hard, your player didn't work, your player this, your player that, you know, it's not our fault. So don't go for the shiny, flashy, overpromise, we produce, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, look at the resume, look at the college athletes and the professional athletes that they're producing, but why are they producing it? Is it because of what they offer and what they provide and their level of coaching? Or do they just do a really good job of recruiting really good players, shoving them on a team, and then just go play? 
if that's you, if you're a Bryce Harper level type player and you just want to go play for an elite level team and just have exposure for college, fine, fine, do that. But if you're the majority of baseball parents looking for a good place for your parent or for your player to play uh, and continue to grow and get better beyond rec ball, then you want to really do some more research and you want to find something that fits your budget and fits your goals and fits your plan and fits what you have in mind for your player. And really only you guys can decide that as a family if this is a good fit or a right fit. And so I just really encourage you to do your homework, uh, do your due diligence, vet the coaches, vet the program, vet the system. And, um, and you know, but don't get lost in that. Don't get lost in the details either because that can um, drag you down that could you could lose a spot on the team because of that because you're kind of hemming and hauling but if if the organization isn't speaking about some true some basics fundamental basics of player development and and teaching competition and helping then then it's not it's probably not a, a program for you unless your player fits that mold but for the majority of players out there that aren't that elite level player right now what they want to develop into and you want it to be more practice and more team bill and more, you know, then you need to find an organization that does that, that offers that. And so that's, that's my goal is to offer that program, to offer the opportunity to get better, to develop as a player, but to compete and win tournaments and win games. And, and because winning is a lot more fun. And so, yes, you learn more through the losses but you've got to have the winning because you got to have the fun to keep the kids coming back to go through the losses, right? Most kids aren't built with it into their DNA to just continue to take it on the chin and continue showing up and to continue putting in the work and putting in the grind with no, no visible signs of success, aka winning. So winning within an organization is crucial and learning how to win is as much a an important part of life it is as it is learning how to lose um, so you have to create that within your program within your organization to have fun and to let them know hey but if you're play if you're really developing the player the way that you're supposed to then the team success will will certainly follow that so as a parent you've got to look and see what your budget is what the additional costs some things that you may not be aware of for travel ball is different tournaments different umpire fees different you have to pay for baseballs you have you know and some the your monthly dues cover all that some they don't so ask that um, you don't take into account you know the the mileage that you're traveling so gas and road snacks and wear and tear in the car and hotel costs and a lot of things that you know a travel organization or travel coach or no one really tells you uh, about travel baseball is the extra expenses that don't go towards the travel program so it's not their obligation to tell you i'm going to tell you um you know hotel average cost of a hotel is 100 dollars a night right i mean you can find them for 180 dollars a night you can find them for 60 but the average cost is 100 100 to 120 dollars a night for a hotel times how many every night you're staying you get the point so every weekend that's happening or every other weekend or whatever the case may be but understand that getting into travel baseball is a big commitment it is uh you know it's not but you're getting more for your money hopefully you know you pay 100 bucks or whatever kind of you know a smaller investment for a rec league and you're going to get that you're going to get the volunteer coach you're going to get the um you know, the team that has the first, the three or four first timers on it, you're going to get, you know, you're going to get the dads that don't really know much, but they're there to volunteer and help because they, they want to, and they want to help kids and they want to be involved. But that, you know, at the same time, if they don't know what they don't know, then they could be potentially hurting that player because they're giving them bad advice, not knowing any better, not doing it out of, you know, malice or ill intent, but could still be a thing. So, um, it's a lot to weigh between rec ball and, and travel ball. And, and for me and my family, we've found, well, this was going to be the first year of doing it, but playing some rec, some rec ball and travel ball. I still love a lot of the core things that Chesterfield, um, Chesterfield, that Little League stands for and that rec ball stands for and the hope and the opportunity. And I grew up playing rec ball. Travel baseball was not a thing when I was coming up through. 
uh, until a little bit later on, and I kind of dabbled in a little bit, but it just wasn't as big of a thing. All the best players, all the best athletes were playing Little League at that time and playing Babe Ruth and playing rec baseball. And so um, that's what I grew up in. That's kind of that old school nostalgia. But I'm understanding that travel baseball does provide a lot more opportunities. But you as a family, based on your players' wants, needs, desires, goals, ambitions, work ethic, your budget, all that stuff need to make a better decision or need to make a decision um, on what you're going to do. And obviously playing both is at a cost, but you get the best of both worlds, at least for a period of time. So I, I sit on the board of a little league and I'm also a, an assistant coach with a travel team and travel parent. So I'm seeing it from both sides of the perspective. I've also been a travel, as I mentioned, a travel, a travel ball head coach and a travel ball assistant coach uh, for the last seven, eight years. So not or almost 10 total. But I can see it from lots of different perspectives just because of where I've been at. And I also happen to know some people that run organizations and have started organizations. And so I've gotten a perspective um, that maybe others don't have. So hopefully that can provide and shed some light on you know, is your kid ready for, for travel ball? What's travel ball like? Should I just stay with rec? When, when's the right time? A lot of those questions are based on, or a lot of those answers to those questions are based on you and your child and your family and, and your wants, needs, and desires. And so that's a conversation we can have uh, privately, but I just wanted to put some information out. Like I said, three pros, three cons of travel baseball, provide some different perspective, but Condor Baseball is looking to fill that gap, at least here locally to begin with in my area, and looking to expand with our philosophy and the way that we coach and the way that we teach the game, the way that we build organizations and build teams and systems for success, um, hopefully take our message throughout the entire market and throughout the entire uh, United States and maybe even globally. But at least starting out here locally, trying to get a travel organization that combines the best of both worlds and minimizes the negative of both worlds. So uh, it's not perfect, but it's still this work in, in progress that we're putting together and, and making plans for and hopefully launching sometime soon. Um, but nonetheless, at least share some information about travel baseball, about rec ball, and maybe give you some more information to help you make a better decision or maybe even confuse you more and bring up more questions that then we can kind of talk about privately. So uh, let me know wherever you're listening to this podcast or watching this episode, like, share, comment, follow along for more. Let me know what you want to hear. Let me know what questions you have. You can DM me. You can email me at condorbaseball at gmail.com. That's C-O-N-D-E-R-B-A-S-E-B-A-L-L at gmail.com. You can also go to condorbaseball dot com. There is information there. There you can schedule a free consultation. Um, you can sign up and get information about clinic, mini clinics, and bigger, larger group camps. We also have Condor Baseball Academy YouTube channel with more videos being loaded up in there very soon. So we have lots of information, lots of things that we're trying to push out to people to give you the information. And again, really take care of that middle middle class market between the haves and the have nots of the baseball world and bridge that gap a little bit. That's one of that's one small snippet of my mission statement. And so I just want to make a quick podcast episode and, and quick uh, YouTube video about just some basics to start out with. Like I said, we could talk about this until we're you know blue in the face, but just three pros. Once again, three pros, exposure game reps, and better competition, three cons to travel ball, cost, less practice time, and there's less team and more eye involved. So those are the, just three pros and cons of travel ball. Let me know what your pros and cons are, what you have found, or what your experience is, and hopefully we can push that information out to other people. But listen, go win, be great, make it a great day. Coach T out. See ya.